evening. This is Sergeant X. Of all the countless characters created by the pen, comparatively few are destined for a long public life. However, Dashiell Hammett, the mystery writer, created a couple of characters named Nick and Nora Charles about ten or more years ago. Well, Nora and Nick are still around and still doing fine. As you hear tonight in the Mystery Playhouse. Yes, tonight the Mystery Playhouse is host to Nick and Nora Charles. As they appear in another episode from The Adventures of the Thin Man. Well, to begin with, our mystery in the lighter vein is chock full of surprising and unusual occurrences. Take, for instance, the fact that it's 9 o'clock in the morning when our story opens, and Nick Charles, who usually can't be pried from the arms of Morpheus before noon except in case of fire or disorder, is not only up but fully dressed. And it's in this extremely unlikely situation that he's found by his good friend Ebenezer Williams, sheriff of Crabtree County. Eb is very surprised indeed. In fact, you might say he's amazed. Well, all dressed, my Godfrey. You sure you're all right, Nick? Oh, come in, Eb. I've been going crazy. I've been up all night. What's wrong? Nora's gone. She left the house yesterday afternoon. I haven't heard a word from her since. Oh, so she finally come to her senses. Did she find another fella? Eb, this is serious. I, I called the police, the newspapers. Not a trace of her. This never happened before. Oh, take it easy, Nick. Yeah, but I've never felt so miserable. Well, look at me. No no dinner, no sleep. Oh, Nora. Uh, maybe that'll learn you to be nice to your next wife. I don't want a next wife. I want the one I got. You, you can't get that model anymore. What am I saying? Eb, Eb, do, you, do you really think she left me? Maybe. Oh, oh, maybe that's the police. Maybe they found the body. Maybe. Shall I answer it? No, I'll face it. I have it coming to me. Hello? Hello. Tell Nora that Wolfie is calling. Who are you? Wolfie, you dope. Well, I'm Nora's husband. Don't worry. You won't be for long. Oh, how do you know? Because I'm the guy she's going to marry. Who says so? She does. She proposed to me last night. Hey, what is this, a gag? What, what did you do to my wife? My dear fellow. Hey, come on, you pug talk. I refuse to listen to such language over a telephone. Oh, Hello? Hello? Who was that? Some idiot Nora promised to marry last night. That ain't possible. She can't be married to two idiots at the same time. The guy screamed just before he hung up. Eb, what could have happened to Nora? Uh, hello? Hello? This is Leo. Hello, Leo. What do you want? $200, of course. What for? The mirror, naturally. Well, that's Leo for you. Always a sucker for a beautiful dame. Listen, I don't know anything about this. Well, didn't your wife tell you about me? No. Oh, that's deceptive. Where'd you last see my wife? Leo's. The gathering place of convivial spirits. She left after she broke the mirror behind my bar. Why? My wife didn't get home. I've been looking everywhere for her. Aunt knows, bud. You shouldn't let a dame like that go around loose. That's just it. Was she loose? Well, I'd say she was tight. That's impossible. Nora never gets tight. Does she throw horseshoes at mirrors in her natural state? Where did she get a horseshoe? From a horse, naturally. Who was my wife with? One was a female lady of interesting design. The other was a male gentleman of designing interest. What are you talking about? The guy I know. His name is Bill Martin, and no good. The dame I didn't know. Listen, I'll... I'll be down to your place. Where, where is it? On 6th Avenue in the village. You know what I'd do if I had a wife like yours, bud? Oh, what? I'd lock her and me in a golden cage and throw away the key. Bye. Goodbye, Leo. Oh, Eb, this is the zaniest thing that ever happened. Thank you, darling. Oh, and everything. How are you, F.D. Wendy? Hi, Nori. How are you? <laughs> Oh. Or is it a military secret? Uh, I'm feeling deliriously hilarious. Have you ever walked on 
bubbled. No, dear. It requires the greatest delicacy, and it's hard to keep your balance. Kiss me, darling. Nora, what have you been drinking? I didn't touch the drop. All I had was one teeny weeny cup of tea. Tea? Mm, with crumpets, kiss me. Where were you last night? Kiss me first. There. Now, mm. where were you last night? Oh, uh, last night? Well, darling, I had tea with Joan Lawrence, and then... Then I don't remember. That's odd, isn't it? Well, don't you remember anything? Of course. I woke up in a nice, comfy hotel suite, and I tried to phone you, but the line was busy, so I came over and here I am. Uh, with the nail down that floor... Oh, catch me! Laura! She's, she's out here. Yeah. Well, I reckon that solves the mystery of your mission wife. No, Eb, you're wrong. I'm afraid we're at the beginning of another mystery. Huh? Look up Dr. Barton's name in the phone book. Tell him to get up here immediately. Why? Is there something wrong? Look at her eyes, Eb. Unless I'm crazy, she's been crushed. <laughs> Am I dying? No, dear. The doctor said you'll be okay. The doctor? Yes, Sonori. You've been drugged. Oh, why should anyone want to do a thing like that to little me? Mm. That's what I want to find out. What happened after you had tea with Joan Lawrence? I, I don't know. In your bag, we found a key to a suite in the Wilson Hotel. You remember registering there? No, I woke up there. Where'd you go between the time you had tea with Joan and the time you woke up? I have no idea. Do you remember going to a joint called Leo's? The gathering place of convivial spirits? Hmm, sounds delightful. Was I there? I reckon so. You broke the mirror behind his bar with a horseshoe. Now, what made you do a thing like that? Well, I can't imagine it. But I do remember one thing. There was the nicest man with me and Joan. Wolfie? No. No, I don't remember anyone named Wolfie. Well, you should, dear. You asked him to marry you. You know, I must have had a wonderful time. Tell me more. You know a fellow named Bill Martin? That's him. He's the nicest man. Joan knew him. He's in business with her husband. Darling, did you call Joan? Yes, baby. No one answers at her apartment. Well, that's funny. Nick, do you think something happened to Joan? I don't know, darling. But I don't think you were drugged by accident. We're going to the Wilson Hotel and check that key you have. Come in, Nora. Eb? Yeah. Was this the suite you woke up in? Mm-hmm. I remember. It looked a mess. Looks like a hurricane struck it. Isn't it a shame, dear? What? I evidently had the time of my life last night, and I didn't even know it. Hey, uh, Mr. Russell left his bag here. Ed, will you help me open it? Okie, baby dokey. Hey, that's sure an oversized suitcase. Looks more like a little trunk. Uh, now she's open it. Nick! Don't be frightened, baby. He can't hurt you. He's dead. That, that's Bill Martin. He was the nicest man. The one that told you about. We, the woman's compact in his pocket. Well, that's my compact. I wonder how he got it. Nora, did you kill him? Me? Kill him? Yes, darling. Now, now, now don't be afraid to tell me the truth. Well, I, I don't remember. Now, just try to think. Did you stick a knife in his back because... Because he got fresh? Well, I don't know. You sure he was killed with a knife, Nick? Well, yeah, you can see the wound in his back. Say, there's blood stains here near the telephone. Did you find anything more on his body? Just this one. Oh, you can't use that, Nick. It's broken. Give it back. Just a second. Nick, could that be broke like that because a bullet hit it? That's what I was wondering, Ed. The hand stopped at 5.30. No bullet holes in this guy. Nora, you keep this watch. Uh, what's the name of the restaurant where you had tea with Joan Lawrence? The Bixley on Lower Fifth Avenue. It's near Joan's Park. I'm going down there. 
Do you think poor John is dead, too? Maybe, baby. I want you and Eb to take a careful look around here and then go to Joan's apartment. Eb, use this collection of skeleton keys to get in. So long, darling. Take good care of her, Eb. All right. Eb. Hmm? You don't think I killed him, do you? I don't know, Nori. Say, will you take a look in them closets? I'm going over that other room. Yeah. All right, Eb. Oh, what a lovely clock. Oh, my neck. Let go. Let go. Find anything in that closet, Nori? Nori? Don't you hear me? Nori, I just look. Look. Nori. with me. Yeah, that's right. Were you on duty in this restaurant about five o'clock yesterday afternoon? Yeah. Hey, ain't you Nick Child? That's right. Don't you remember me? Rayfield, the rat. Of course, I sent you up, didn't I? Yeah, I could have got 50 years, but you only let me get 10. Gee, you changed. You used to be a good-looking young fella. Well, I hope you've changed too, Rayfield. Here, uh, will you take a look at this picture in my wallet? Some dog. That's my wife. Did you serve her yesterday? What does the rest of her look like? The usual accessories, but well played. She was here. What another dame. This other dame had a wonderful bill. I saved them. Where? In that boot right over there. Now listen, Rayfield. I want you to remember exactly what happened while they were here. Try and recall every detail. If it will help your memory, act it out. Okay. Now, uh, let me see. You be your wife. I am the girl with the bill. So, we come in. We look around to see if anybody notices what terrific lookers we is. And after we see that all the wolves is foaming at the mouth, we sit down. Now, where, where do I sit? In the corner of the boot. Me. I'm the other girl. I sit here. So another person joins us. A guy named Bill. Very good looking. Bill Martin? Yeah, yeah, that's his name. He ordered cocktail. Now listen carefully. Did you see Bill Martin put anything in the girl's tea? No. But an hour later, they was all still here. Bill had lots of drinks. And they was all laughing like things was hilarious. Did you see any of them leave? Yeah. I left. I mean me. The, uh, the girl with the boot. I comes up and asks me, Rayfield, where is the telephone boot? And I tell me. Then me, Rayfield, I see your wife and the man in the boot. How did my wife look? Tired, like. Sort of sitting in the corner, leaning back with her eyes closed. I figure she drunk some of the guy's cocktail. When did this girl return? In about five minutes. Did the man leave the booth at all? No. Why should he leave when he's got a good-looking babe like your wife there? About six o'clock, they all left together. They all walked with a wobble. Okay, Rachel. Guess that'll be all. Thanks. Don't mention it. And if you need my help again, be free to call on me. Nothing's too much for the guy what sent me up the river for ten years. <laughs> Of course I will accept your check for two hundred dollars, Mister Charles. That's Leo for you. He'll take a check from anybody. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions, Leo? Not at all. I personally am a convivial spirit, and I like conversation. At what time did my wife break that mirror? At precisely two a.m. What makes you so sure? I was waiting here to warn us. You know they have it on the radio every hour. Bill Martin and this girl were with my wife all the time. Yeah. Why did you say Bill Martin was a no-good? Did you ever hear of Pedro Gonzalez? Sure, he used to have a bootlegging mark. It's black market now. This guy, Bill Martin, was connected with him. He tried to sell me some tax-free liquor once. Hmm. Leo, can, can I use your phone? Sure, sure, go ahead. Take a tip from me, pal. Don't fool around with Gonzalez. He ain't no convivial spirit. Well, I've just 
trying to find out if Martin drugged my wife. Hello? Uh, hello, Ebb. How long have you been there at Jones' place? Oh, a few minutes, Nick. Say, I'm glad you called. The killer was hiding in one of the closets. Did, did you get him? No, the killer got us. What? He shot Nolly on the head. But she's all right now. Oh, good. He sneaked outside in it. Well, did, did you find anything important in the apartment? I reckon so. We found another corpse. Who? Jones? We, no, no. The husband. Shot full of bullet holes. And plenty murdered. Yeah. All right, I got you, Nick. All right, Nick, I'll do like you say. All right. Did Nick find the killer, Ed? No, but he was telling me about the information he dug up. What are you doing there, Ed? Just looking at this corpse's pocket, Nori. There's a bullet hole into it. I didn't notice that before. Is it important? Maybe. Now, that's the vest pocket where a fellow usually carries a watch. You know, I think this fellow was not only killed... He was robbed by Godfrey. Ev, did you notice that banjo clock in the wall? Well, uh, what about it? It stopped at two. And the reason it stopped is because there are a couple of bullet holes in it. Look. Oh, Joan, darling. Hello, Nora. Oh, I've got the most awful headache. I... Gilbert! Gilbert, what happened to Now, don't, don't try to put yourself together. Your husband has been murdered. We found him here like that. <laughs> Now, oh, no, this is awful. Now, Nick and our friend Ed Williams are working on this case. Now, if you can keep a grip on yourself, you can help us. Well, well I'll be all right, Nora. I was afraid something like this was going to happen. That's why I wanted to talk to you yesterday. My husband and Bill Martin, they were in trouble with Pedro Gonzalez. He's a gangster, you know. Yeah, Nick told me all about that. Miss Lawrence, uh... Where was you last night? Well, I... Uh, I'm not really sure. It's all very hazy. I, I woke up only a few minutes ago at the Royal Crest Hotel. Did... Did anything happen to Bill Martin? He's been murdered, too. Oh, no. No, he was drugged. Well, then... Then I must have been drugged, too. Well, of course, I see it all now. They drugged us so I, I wouldn't go home and find them killing Gilbert and... Bill Martin must have known about it. He was very close to them, so they killed him to keep him quiet. Yeah. Was your husband alive at two yesterday afternoon? Well, yes, I, I had lunch with him. Joan, why'd you murder your husband? What are you talking about? You, Joan. You murdered both of them. No, he, he's crazy, isn't he? Eb, how could she have done it? It's impossible. No, she drugged you at about 5.15 yesterday afternoon. Then left, saying she had to make a phone call. But instead, she come up here and killed her husband. She turned the clock back to two, put a few bullets into it, come back to the restaurant where you were sitting with Bill Martin. In your condition, Nori, you didn't even know she'd been gone. I don't remember everything, but I do know Joan was with me last night. Sure. She was using you as an alibi. At 2 a.m., the time she wanted the police to believe the murder was committed... She and Bill Martin put you up to throwing that horseshoe into the mirror in back of Leo's bar. But why'd she want me to do a thing like that, Ian? To strengthen the alibi. Ain't that right, Joan? He, he's out of his head. Am I? You give Nori an extra dose of the drug. Put her to bed at the Wilson Hotel. Now, up to this point, Bill Martin was helping you. Your problem now was to get rid of Martin. I suppose I killed him, too. You told him to call Nick's place, act like a goon, and use the name Wolfie. The object was to see if Nori was home yet. Well, soon as he finished phoning, you drove a knife into his back. Nick even heard his scream. Listen, if I'm such a clever killer, why'd they ever pick on Nora to have tea with me? Because you knew after your husband was found dead that Nori would get Nick interested in the case. It would be simple to hint that Bill Martin got some hoodlum to do it. Martin would appear especially guilty since he was dead also. All right. Get him up, both of you. I'm getting out of here. If any of you try to follow me, you'll be killed. Goodbye. Hello. <laughs> Nicky. Oh, I just clipped her lightly on the chin, Nicky, darling. Guess what? Ev solved the whole thing. She's the killer. Well, of course, baby. I knew it all along. Now, how did you figure it out? Darling, you know I never discuss such things outside our bedroom. 
Wait till tonight. Why can't you ever tell me how brilliant you are in broad daylight? I'm ready and waiting for your story. Well, it was simplicity itself, baby. I knew that whoever drugged you probably committed the murder. There were only two suspects, Martin and Joan. And since Martin was dead, it had to be Joan. Right. I was afraid for a while that Joan was dead, too. I'd have to investigate Gonzalez. Joan confessed that she did it for her husband's insurance. Martin was in love with her, and so was a willing accomplice. Did you miss me last night, dear? Well, not at all. You big liar. Ed, tell me what you said. I ought to stay away more often. It'll make you appreciate me. Better not try it, or I'll stay away nights, too. What about me did you miss most of all, Mickey? The way you say good night. Oh. Well, then. Good night, Mickey, darling. <laughs> Thank you, Nick and Nora Charles, for another chapter in The Adventures of the Thin Man. Tonight's presentation in the Mystery Playhouse. Before taking our usual trip to the green room, let's discuss three ways we can all help lengthen the war. Here they are. First, throw away all your extra equipment. Second, don't take care of the equipment and ordnance you have left. Third... Waste your field rations. Only eat the parts you like. Well, that's only three ways. But if each and every man and woman in the service indulged in just those three consistently, V-Day would be a far cry indeed. Of course, no one's no one would act like that on purpose, but unfortunately, we all tend to treat GI materiel a little bit like a stepsister. And when you multiply your callousness and wastage a million or more times, it's no longer funny. So let's not help lengthen the war. Let's shorten it by conserving everything we have. This is Sergeant X, closing the doors of the Mystery Playhouse. Good night.